And everybody said, Amen. Good evening, everyone. And I pray that the Lord will open our eyes to see wondrous things out of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for our leaders, brothers and sisters over here at the headquarters and in all the states and in all the countries where we're gathered together now. We pray, Lord, you'll mightily be in the midst of every congregation in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that even though this appears to be a familiar subject, yet you'll enlighten us to go higher, to go further, and to go deeper in the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. And reach our family devotion. And reach our personal quiet time. That law through all this will make unprecedented progress in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that. We're coming to Mark chapter 1. And in Mark chapter 1, we're looking at verse 35. Mark chapter 1, please open your Bible reading from verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. We're reading about the Lord Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. And who had been with the Father from eternity past until this time, he was now on earth. And when he came to this world, we're told that he made of himself no reputation. That he is, he divested himself, he emptied himself of his divine power and divine authority. He wanted to live a life as the Son of Man. That we will see that if it was possible for him to live that life, in the goodness of God, in the power of God, and in all we can have from the Father today, then we will know if it was possible for him, it's possible for us as well. That's the reason why he did what he did, and now we're told that early in the morning, it's recorded for us for this special day, that is this particular day when he rose up early in the morning, a great while before day, but that was his regular practice. He wasn't just visiting the Father, or he wasn't just talking to the Father, praying to the Father, hearing from the Father once in a while. It was a regular thing, but this is written for us for an illustration example. And in the morning rising up, a great while before day, a great while before day. That means before the people woke up, before the business of the day started, and before people started running here and there, he rose up early, great while before day, and then he went out. Why? Because he didn't have a place to lay his head, and where he was living, it wasn't his personal accommodation. And people there will have their own timetable, their own project, what they were going to do. And therefore, he wanted a place that was quiet, a place that he could concentrate on what he was doing and pray to the Father alone. And so he departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Why is that written for us? Well, told in First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 21, for even here unto what ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Did he listen to the Father? Then we should. Did he read the word of God? Yes, we should. Did he have knowledge of the word of God reaching in the Old Testament? And so we should. And did he pray to the Father every time? Then we should. He left us an example. And in this area of personal devotion, personal quiet time, and family devotion, he has left an example for us. And we ought to follow his example. We're told in Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, 
Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 3, it says, Blessed is he that readeth. He wants us to read the word of God, the revelation of God, and the scriptures that have been given unto us. And he said, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. It's one thing to read, and then when you are not reading, you can hear. There are gadgets today that records the whole Bible uh, that you can put on your phone, you can put on your iPad, and it can be on your computer. And we use that regularly on Mondays at the Bible study and also on Sunday in the worship service. And you can have that personal cheer that you can read. You can also hear, and it says that the blessedness for the people who hear and the blessedness for the people who read, and then to keep those things which are rich in therein. Our reading the word is to heed the word, is to obey the word, is to keep the word, is to walk along and live like the word is teaching us and revealing unto us. If we have and we should have, as we have quiet time, as we have family devotion, we read the word, we meditate on the word, we even memorize part of the word, and then we apply the word to ourselves, and then every member of the family applying the word unto themselves. If you are just an ordinary believer, you apply the word to your life as a believer. If you are a minister, your quiet time and family devotion should also have a part that develops your ministry, that shows that you are a minister and then you apply the word as a minister. Are you a father? Are you a mother? Are you an employer? Are you an employee? You reach the word and you apply the word to those areas of your life because the blessing is not just in the hearing. The blessing is hearing and doing and keeping those things that are reaching therein. And then it says, for the time is at hand. The time is certain. If we were careless in the past about quiet time, about family devotion, if we were careless in the past about reading the word and keeping the word, we don't have any luxury of being careless now because the time of the coming of the Lord is very near. The time is at hand. If there's any time, well, to tighten our belt, Anytime we ought to read the scriptures more, anytime we ought to apply the scriptures more to our lives, anytime we ought to obey the word of God, it is now because the time is at hand. Now, how do we do quiet time? And sometimes when you've been doing something you know, for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years, or even more, you, we may stand the risk of just doing it that same way, whether it is bearing fruit or not. That's the reason we ought to listen today and find out how do we do it to make it profitable. How do we do quiet time to make it purposeful? How do we do quiet time to make it um, profitable and powerful in our lives so that we will know and people can tell the effect that we're into the scriptures personally, we're into the scriptures as members of the family, and it is profitable, it is purposeful, and it is powerful. Tonight, we're looking at the message, profitable, quiet time, for believers and for families. For believers on the one hand as individuals and then for families on the other hand, if we have wife or children or we have husband and wife, then you have family devotion, you have father, mother and children at the very early age of those children, they all gather together and they understand this is an important event every day in the family. Profitable, quiet time for believers and their families. When well, dividing the message to three parts, number one, personal quiet time for daily devotional fellowship. Personal quiet time for daily devotional fellowship. Point number two, Perplexing, questionable tendency of dull, dormant 
faithlessness. If we have quiet time and it doesn't excite our faith, doesn't increase our faith, and doesn't make our fail to progress and will remain dull and dormant and we just do business as usual, quiet time as usual, devotion as usual and it is not adding to our lives. It's not helping us to make progress. That's not good enough. That's why we're looking at that second point, perplexing, questionable tendency of dull, dormant, faithlessness. Point number three now, profitable quickening transformation a kind of power that comes to us and quickens us and makes us come alive and add something into our lives and gives us impetus and gives us drive and gives us passion because of the quiet time that we do in the appropriate way we're quickened and we're transformed towards a divinely determine the future towards a divinely determined future what does that mean every child of god has a future the ultimate future the final future is heaven but then here on earth god has called us for a particular purpose when the kingdom at such a time as this maybe in your future you'll be a pastor in your future, you'll be a minister. In your future, you'll be a leader. In your future, you will occupy a particular place. Understand? All the people who have read about in the Bible, they became this, they became that. There was a period of preparation. And they had to be looking forward to that future. You have a future. The Lord has called you for such a time as this. And your quiet time should contribute to transforming you and quickening you and qualifying you to become the man, the woman that you have been divinely ordained for. Point number one now, we're looking at personal quiet time for daily devotional fellowship. We're looking at Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, we find Mary that sat at the feet of Jesus. And then we're told in Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he, Christ, he, our Lord and Savior, entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Then in verse 39, it says, And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And heard his word. You know the story yourself, but look at verse 42. In verse 42, it tells us, But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. It's a personal choice that you will organize your time, you will arrange your time, you know your own schedule, and you know all the activities of the day, and you know the things you have to do if you're going to work, if you're going to a farm, if you're going to an employment, you know when you ought to leave the home, so you rearrange your own time to have this time. You will sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, hear his word, read his word, and then you have a good quality time with the Lord early in the morning. And that's why we're looking at this. This is personal. You see, Mary and Martha were sisters. They were living in the same house, but Mary made a personal choice. There are three things we're looking at as we look at personal quiet time for daily devotional fellowship. Number one, true fellowship with God. True fellowship with God. And look at First John chapter 1. In 1 John chapter 1, looking at verse 3, 
We need fellowship with God. It's just the, the same like, you know, husband and wife, they're in the house. You need fellowship with one another, parents and children. We need fellowship with one another. And God, our Father who is in heaven, and we, sons and daughters here on earth, we need to have this interaction and this intimacy and this fellowship with our heavenly Father. Look at First John chapter 1 verse 3, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you now. John the beloved was writing to the whole church and he wasn't physically present in the whole church. And so how is it that that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you? He declared that by writing. Matthew has written what he saw, what he heard. Mark wrote what he saw, what he heard. And Luke wrote what he saw and what he heard. And John wrote what he saw and what he heard. And then in the Acts of the Apostles, they have written what we saw and what we heard. And in the epistles altogether, that what we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. And then in Revelation, what John saw and what John heard, he has declared unto us. That means the whole of the New Testament, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you and Moses declared Genesis Exodus Leviticus numbers and Deuteronomy what he saw and what he heard and then from Joshua to the end of the Old Testament all of them all those prophets all those writers all those human authors as God inspired them now we have the whole Bible what we have seen and what we have heard declare we unto you in writing that ye also may have fellowship with us that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with the son jesus christ you understand then we take the bible we take the word of god and what those apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and the people of the old and the new covenant what they saw what they had everything recorded for us so that as we read as we study as we learn we will have fellowship with the father and with the lord jesus christ and we have fellowship with one another and we're looking at jeremiah chapter 15. in jeremiah chapter 15 we're reading from verse 16 we look at the word of god we're taking the word of god jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 it says thy words were found and i did eat them thy words were found and i did eat them as you look at your bible from the from genesis all through to malachi you have a lot of times where god says thus says the lord find it out and then you find in the new testament where the lord said i will put my word in his mouth that is in the mouth of the lord jesus christ and then we're told that in days gone by god spoke by those prophets but now in these final days he's speaking to us by the son is giving us the word of god thy words were found if you don't open the bible if you don't read the bible how do you find the words the words concerning salvation the words concerning growth in the lord and the words concerning the strength we ought to have thy words were found and i did eat them i did eat them it's talking like you know i take breakfast and as i take the normal food to help my physical life and my physical body i see the word of god i take that in as i take that in it will build up my spiritual life when we take the normal food we don't uh, eat uh, raw cassava we don't eat raw yam we don't eat a raw potato. We don't eat all those things raw. We have to prepare them. 
the same thing as you come to the word of God, it's reaching. And sometimes a single verse, but you, sometimes you cannot take that role. You have to uh, can put that on the fire of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is uh, giving to us like fire. The Holy Ghost is giving to us like water. And the Holy Ghost will apply the word, will interpret the word, just like we cook our normal meal and we need water and we need fire to make that thing edible, the word of God is giving to us and the Holy Ghost like fire and the Holy Ghost like water also prepares that word and it is given to our spirit and now we can reach, we can eat and we can take in. You understand? When you eat, you take that word you put in the mouth, you have to take it in, and you have to chew. And then you have to allow it to go inside. And it is that food you chew, if you chew it very well, that will become particles, nutrients, that will go to every nerve and every muscle and the blood system and everywhere. The same thing, the watch of God. When we have quiet time, it is not just that, okay, I have read, you will apply that word, you will chew that word, and you will meditate on that word until it gets to your brain, it gets to your mind, it gets to your system, it will generate faith in you. And everything you need in that word, you will get by chewing that word, meditating on that word. Thy words were found, and I did eat them and thy word was unto me joy and rejoicing of my heart for I am called by the name by thy name O Lord God of hosts we come to a second point here and it's the foundation of godliness the word of God is the foundation of of godliness and you understand if we're going to be like god he is godly and he is holy and he is righteous and it is his word that creates and gives us that same nature look at second timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 19 second timothy chapter 2 we're looking at verse 19 it says nevertheless the foundation of god stand assured have been their seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord knoweth them that are his. How do we become people of God? Please remember that everyone that is born into this world is born without righteousness, without godliness, and without the grace to do right. And Jesus said to those Jews, ye are of your father, the devil. How did humanity, part of humanity, those of us who are now children of God, how did we cross over from being the children of the devil to the sons and the daughters of God? The Lord knows them that are his. The only connection we have with God is his word. It is the word that reveals to us how to cross over. That we're children of the devil, now we're going to be a child of God. It's only in the word. We cannot see that in the sky. We cannot see that in the sea. We cannot see that in vegetation. The connection we have with the almighty God is his word. And so, if anybody is going to be a son of God, a daughter of God, it's through the word. If somebody is going to become a servant of God, a minister of God, it's through the word. If someone is going to become strong, it's through the word. If somebody is going to become intimate with God, it is through the word. That's why quiet time is so important. That's why taking your Bible, reading the Bible, understanding the Bible for yourself, and knowing that you are connected with God, that's why it's very important. And this is the foundation of godliness and the foundation of the grace of God coming into our lives. The Lord knows the them that are his and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You understand? Uh, the psalmist said, In sin was I born. 
in iniquity was I born. And that sin and that iniquity was the cord that linked us with Satan. But then we say, I don't want to be of Satan anymore. I want to belong to the Almighty God. Well, if that is going to be the case, since we were born in iniquity and were born in sin and transgression, the Word of God now tells us this is how to become a real child of God. We depart from iniquity. And we look at Jesus Christ, our Savior, and then he said, Whosoever comes to me, I will in no way cast out. We are not on earth when he said that, but that which we heard and that what we have seen, we have written down, declared unto you that you also may have fellowship with God. And as we know that if we come to the Lord, he will not reject us. And we departed from iniquity. That's how we now have this connection with the Lord. We're now members of the family of God. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, it says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor. We're learning that it is not enough to just be a child of God. The Lord knows those who are his. I'm a child of God. I'm a son. I'm a daughter uh, in the kingdom of God. But now, I want to be a vessel unto honor. I want to carry the precious ointment of the Spirit. I want to carry that to the world. I want to carry the message of life. I want to carry that to the world. And so I want to become a vessel. Am I going to be a vessel, a vessel that will be clean, a vessel that will not have rust in it, that will contaminate the ointment that the vessel is bearing? If I'm going to give something pure to the, uh, to the people, if I'm going to give something you know, energizing and life-giving to the people, this vessel must be a vessel unto honor. How will that happen? Sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Your work will be good. And you'll be prepared unto every good work in Jesus' name. Now remember, that is the foundation. And it is a quiet time. It is a devotion that helps us every time that will point out this should not be in my life, that should not be in my character, that should not be in my approach. And as I do that, then I'm becoming purer and purer and more suitable meat for the master's use. It will happen like that to every one of us in Jesus' name. Number three now is the food for growth. The food for growth. And we're looking at uh, First Peter chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 2. First Peter chapter 2, we're reading from verse 2 here. In verse 2 it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Now, we've uh, all of us who have grown up in families. And as we have grown up in families, we remember that as a family with our parents when we were very young, we ate together on the same table. And as we younger people were taking milk, they also, our parents, will take milk. It might be in tea, it might be in coffee, it might be with cereals or any other thing. So, the milk is not only for the babies. The milk is for all believers. And the milk is for daddies and mommies. The milk is for fathers and mothers. And the milk is for ministers and overseers for everyone. But the newborn babes touch with that. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. This is the food for our growth. You are going to grow in grace. You need the food. You grow in faith, you need the food. And you need wisdom to do everything you ought to do and be who you ought to be in society. You need the food. And this food is the word of God. Sincere, unadulterated, pure milk of the word that she may grow 
thereby uh, it tells us uh, that it is that that will give us the growth we ought to have look at matthew chapter 4. in matthew chapter 4 we're reading from verse 4. matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 4 and he answered and said it is written it is written well how would jesus have known that it was written if he did not read the word he read the word remember that he was uh, born as a babe and as he was born as a babe luke tells us that he grew in strength he grew in wisdom he grew in knowledge and he grew in favor with god and favor with man just like we grow too because as we are pointed out he left his divinity and he became a man like us and he grew up and it is by reading that word you remember the age of 12 when he was with uh, the the priest he was with the teachers in the in the temple and the parents had gone three days journey when they came back they found him discussing the scriptures with those priests that means he was reading the scriptures and he will ask them questions they will answer they will ask him questions and he will answer he knew the word he studied the word and he has given us an example that we too should study the word and learn the word when do we do that when did he learn that he said how knoweth this man letters having not gone to school this is not what he learned in a school it is by personal devotion and the spiritual devotion looking at the word of god by himself and he's passed at that unto you and passed that on to me he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god man shall not live by bread alone he will live by bread but not by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Why did he say that? Because we are three parts. We have a body. That body depends on natural food. We have a body that depends on physical food that we take in. But that physical food will not minister to our spirit, will not minister to our soul. Man has a soul and he has a spirit. In the part of the body, the physical food, the natural food will take care of. But then if his body is all right, how about his soul? How about his spirit? That's why it says, but by every word, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, when we eventually finish here on earth, if Jesus has not come and we have to go to heaven through death, remember the body will be will die and the body will be buried. Now, if man was only living by the physical food, it's the end now for that body. But the spirit and the soul, if it had been empty, if it had been starved, and it didn't have the nourishment of the promise of God, where will the spirit go? If the spirit and the soul does not have the power of the grace of God to live as they ought to live, where will the spirit go? That's why it says, as you are feeding your body, with the natural food you will feed your soul you will feed your spirit with the spiritual food which is the word of god we're looking at romans chapter 10 verse 17 romans chapter 10 we're reading from verse 17 so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's come back to our family. In our families, a baby is born, and the baby does not know uh, the mother, 
the baby does not know the father the baby does not know that this is brother this is uh, my sister but then by the word by the word that um, you know the members of the family the younger ones they begin to say mommy mommy and then she is hearing that and that little baby will say mommy mommy and then the others they will say daddy daddy and he will pick that up and say daddy daddy and then they will say eh, daddy is going to give me this and he would also say daddy is going to give me this the point is this that child knows the father by the word they speak in the family that child knows the mother by the word they speak in the family. That child knows that mommy will give me breakfast and she will not fail by the word they speak in the family. That child knows that daddy has promised he'll buy me this and daddy is going to do it. He will not fail by the word they speak in the family. The same thing. What gave that child the faith and the trust and the confidence in the family, in the father, in the mother, is the word, the words they speak. What gives us faith? What gives us trust? What gives us confidence in the almighty God that gives us confidence in the promises of God, gives us confidence in the prophecies of the word of God, gives us confidence in everything we read by the word. So then, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing the word is so important, and believing the word is so important. Reading the word is so important. Now that word gives us, we're looking at the letters of the word fellowship. F is faith. It gives us faith. And then we're told it gives us establishment. It establishes us in the present truth. If you're reading the word, if you're learning the word, it will establish you. The winds may blow and difficulties may come. You'll be an established man, an established woman, an established minister. L is light. The entrance of your word gives me light. When you read the word of God, that's in uh, Psalm 119, verses 105 and 130. It gives us light. It also gives us life. We need life eternal life abundant life a happy life and an overcoming life the word is what gives us life that's why jesus said the word i speak unto you the spirit and they are life john chapter 6 verse 67 it also gives us order in our lives it says in psalm 119 verse 33 order my steps according to thy word our lives will be disorderly our life will be in shambles our lives will be scattered here and there if we don't have the word but it's as you read the word as you study the word your, your life is orderly and it orders all your steps w there is wisdom the wisdom of the world cannot achieve anything but then the word of god grants us it grants us wisdom it also gives us strength the word of god empowers us and enables us it gives us strength and then it gives us health gives us health as you take the word, it says, Obey my sins and keep my sins in the midst of your heart. It will give strength, it will give life, it will give health to your marrows. That's Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 22. It gives us increase, increase. The soil went forth to sow the word, and then it brought forth increase, and some 30 fold, and 60 fold, and 100 fold. It gives us increase, and of course, it gives us power. 
he gives us power. The word of God, in fact, it says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, it says, upholding all things by the word of his power. Upholding all things is able to uphold you, is able to strengthen you, is able to make you the man, the woman that will have a real spiritual stature as you are growing towards the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that our quiet time, our family devotion, personal devotion will become more meaningful in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Point number two now, perplexing, questionable tendency of dull, dormant faithlessness. Perplexing, um, questionable tendency of dull, dormant faithlessness. Now, it, this is showing us that it is not enough to just read the word. We must go beyond reading the word and then we must have the word inside us, injected in us. And look at uh, Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 15. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 15. It says, For these people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. That's the word, dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Now you understand, this is saying their heart gross, wax gross, their ears dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed and because of that the Lord could not make them see they were dull and dormant and then even though they heard the words they had the sound of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ it didn't make any impact on them they didn't understand what their heart and they were not converted and they were not healed but when they look to reading the Bible, look at Acts chapter 13, verse 27. Acts chapter 13, reading from verse 37. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day. They knew not, they understood not the scriptures they were reading, the writing, the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. That means then we can read and we can even hear, but if we are dull and we are dormant, we will not understand what brings that dullness and what brings that uh, uh, st that situation of being dormant number one daily devotion without faith daily devotion without faith we're told in hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of us should seem to come short of it and then in verse 2 in verse 2 it says for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them the same gospel preached unto them the same word of grace and word of life preached unto them but the word preached did not profit them the word preached whether they read the word or heard the word that word preached did not profit them not be mixed with faith in them that heard it our quiet time our personal devotion our family devotion must not be devoid of faith if we don't have faith if we don't believe what we are reading, if we don't specifically interpret and apply this particular precept and this particular promise, and we just read to fulfill 
all righteousness to say i'm reading my bible and i have done the duty for today but we didn't take that word we have read in particular and apply faith to it and believe it and embrace it and know that this is mine that quiet time that devotion will not profit us you know what it says in Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 6? In Hebrews 11, verse 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Quiet time without faith is impossible to please him. Reading the Bible without faith is impossible to please him. Hearing the word without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God and he that cometh to the word of God, because how do you come to God? You cannot see God in the physical. You come to God when you come to the Word of God. And He talks to you from the Bible, from His reaching Word. And He says, this is the Almighty God telling you what you are reading. You come to the Word, you come to God. He that coming to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you must believe that he is what does that mean he is in the word his word and himself are one and therefore when you read the word during your quiet time that's god talking he honors, he exalts his word above his name. And so you understand, I come to his word, I come to God. And I believe what I've read, this is coming from God, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that's the reason why our quiet time, our daily devotion must not be without faith. Number two, dutiful diligence devout by foxes. Dutiful diligence devout by foxes. In Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, reading from verse 15. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines for our vines have tender grapes take us the foxes the little foxes that spoil the vines for our vines have tender grapes i want you to think about our children that go to school our children that go to school and the teacher is teaching and while the teacher is teaching them and is following a curriculum is following a particular pattern it's not just jumping from this subject to that subject he has to be orderly he has to be systematic to prepare them for the final exam and while the teacher is teaching one boy is, uh, you know, so interested. He has his phone with him, uh, and then somebody calls him on the phone. Uh, while the teacher is talking, he picks the phone, and one way or the other, quietly talks to that person. While he's talking, he misses what the teacher is saying. Uh, then he puts it back, and then, and you know, the teacher is still talking. There's an alert on the phone, uh, and when that alert comes on the phone, he wants to check up because it's just interested to make sure that he doesn't miss anything that is coming from wherever and then he checks up and there is a game that you know that has come on there and then he looks at the game and he says I'm going to do this when I feel from school and drops it and the teacher is still teaching and then another thing comes uh, appears to him he says I must not miss uh, this and that my friend may leave uh, home and if I don't get him now I may not get him in the evening and then he's sending the text and the teacher is talking what am i saying you're having your quiet time and the little foxes of your phone of the alert of the text and of the things coming in popping up and then you are having quiet time and you are you know attending to that you're having quiet time and then you have to go to the toilet and come back you're having quiet time somebody is doing something over there who is that doing that thing you're having quiet time and you are here and there 
there will be no benefit. You don't have uh, the discipline to go on and make sure that you concentrate on what you are doing. Take us, the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. The little, little things we need to take care of so that all those things will not destroy the effect of the studies we're having. And then if you look at Ezekiel chapter 13, Ezekiel chapter 13 tells us in verse 4, Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 4, O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Thy prophets are like foxes in the deserts. There are times you are having quiet time. We already have the daily manna. And the daily manna is uh, carefully reaching uh, with uh, you in mind, with all of us in mind, that will move us from uh, the level where we are to the higher level we ought to be. But you have uh, a lot of other readings that you do, and this one, just like that, maybe it's just habitual that you have this, you have this, and some of the people that have reached those seas, they're like foxes in the deserts. And because you, you read your daily manner and you read your other regular things provided in the church, you read also the Sunday scripture, but the little foxes will not make everything to be productive in your life. That's the reason why there are people, they don't fail in their quiet time, they don't fail in their devotional time, but they're not getting the best of results. Dutiful diligence, but then devout by foxes. Uh, we're coming to number three there, development destroyed by fire. We're looking at James chapter 3. In James chapter 3, we're reading from verse 5. James chapter 3 verse 5, even so the tongue is a little member that boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. The tongue is a little member and it boasts great things. And behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on, on fire the cause of nature and it is set on the fire of hell. I want you to look at life as a progressive a cause that we're moving from this to this to that. And in the course of life, as we're making progress, our tongue is not under control. We say things that we regret about later. We talk and we lose friends by what we're saying. We talk and we lose our peace by what we're saying. We talk and we, and we lose our focus by what we're saying. We talk and we create enemies for ourselves by what we say. And so, instead of the course of our life being straight and going from the commencement to the climax to the culmination, our life is not like that. It's like we're meandering. And if we make any progress at all, we take one step forward and we take three steps backward so that we're now two steps behind. And then we sum up up courage again. I'm going to even have personal retreat. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to study and I'm going to pray. And we do that. And then we take another one step forward but as we come out of that personal retreat and that personal devotion, we, our tongue is the fire and it burns up our wardrobe, it burns up our certificates, it burns up our progress, it burns up our relationship, it burns up everything 
one step forward and then five step backwards seven step backwards it's a fire and it is destroying the development we ought to have as we do a quiet time and you see how much you have gained that early morning how much you have acquired that early morning you then block the way of the foxes that will not come and destroy what you have gathered up you block the way of the fire you have fire extinguisher and you say i'm going to be wiser i'm not going to allow the foxes of the fire to be destroying the progress i am making i pray we'll have progress in jesus name we come to point number three now. In point number three, we're looking at profitable, quickening our transformation towards a divinely determined future. I pray your future, nothing will affect your future negatively in Jesus' name. Your devotion will be profitable and will be progressive and will move you forward to achieve what you ought to achieve in your life in Jesus name. If I were here, I would say amen. amen. Profitable, quickly transformation toward a divinely determined future. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, we're reading from verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience let us run with patience let us run with perseverance let us run with patience and peace in our heart let us run with patience the race that is set before us look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him and endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. As you look at that verse, that's verse 2, you will see that there were things that Jesus Christ had to shed, had to put aside. Uh, like what? For example, you understand how Peter, how close Peter was to him. And then when he said, I'm going to the cross, he knew he had a divinely determined future. And Peter said, no, that will not happen to you. He had to brush that aside. You do not understand the things that belong unto God. It was a preaching sometimes. And then they said, your mother, your brothers and sisters, they are waiting for you. Stop what you are doing. And then come and attend to them. He said, who is my mother? And who are my brothers and sisters? He says, these who are hearing the word of God, they are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. He pushed that aside and uh, you remember as the Pharisees who come and they called him names uh, casting out devils by Beelzebub he pushed all that aside there are things we need to push aside you're going to have quality a uh, quiet time and quality devotional time there are things that will call for your attention there are things that will be like pressure upon you and if you are not careful some things may so overwhelm you while you are taking care of them you forget there is a future you see the lord jesus christ had the future what's the future to be set down at the right hand of the throne of god he was always looking at that future because of that, everything that came between him and that divinely determined the future, he brushed all of them aside, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he got to that future. You will not miss your future. And your future will not miss you in Jesus' name. We're looking at three things here. Number one, powerful quickening tonic for the heart powerful quickly tonic 
for the heart. You see, our heart in the physical, in the natural, our heart is very important for us to keep strong and for us to keep on moving the way we ought to move. If you have a hole in the heart, there's going to be a problem. If your heart is enlarged, there's going to be a problem. And if the heart is weak or weakened, there's going to be a problem. The heart must be strengthened by the Lord, even in the physical. The same thing in the spiritual. We need powerful, quickly, tonic for the heart. In Psalm 27, we're looking at verse 14. Psalm 27, we're looking at verse 14. It says, wait on the Lord. That's a quiet time. Spend time, quality time with the Lord. But it should not be that, you know, I'm just calculating time. I spent one hour today. What if you spent one hour? And part of that one hour, you were dozing, you were sleeping, you were reading one line two times, and you were not able to concentrate, you are distracted here and there. It's better, even if it's a shorter time, but you are full of concentration. And you read, if you have to read aloud, read aloud. And if you have to underline, underline. If you have to look for a concordance for a particular word, look for that concordance. If you, have, if you need a Bible dictionary to know the meaning of a particular word, do all that. Why you are active like that, you cannot be active and sleepy at the same time. But you wait on the Lord. And that time of waiting on the Lord should be purposeful. Jesus said, Tarry ye in Jerusalem, wait until ye be endued with power from on high. Why am I waiting? Am I waiting specifically because of power, the power of God? Am I waiting particularly because I need grace in this area? Because Paul the Apostle said, I called upon the Lord and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Let there be a specific thing. This particular week, I see uh, this area that I need to develop this particular period i see this area i need to look into my life will take on a brighter side if i could have this particular thing developed in my life in my family in my ministry wait on the lord specifically then and be of good courage while you are waiting on the lord know that as you wait on the lord it's not going to be in vain be of good courage and it shall strengthen thine heart he shall strengthen thine heart if the load appears too heavy for you to carry wait on the lord if it appears you have been overwhelmed by problems here and there wait upon the lord if you cannot understand what's happening to the children what's happening to this one that you know she loved the lord he loved the lord before he went to school before she went to school and now he comes back and becomes another thing i don't know what i'm going to do now wait upon the lord if uh, you know life does not seem uh, you know giving you what you expected and it appears when am i going to get this when am i going to get that wait on the lord wait on the lord and be of good courage be of good confidence in the lord he shall strengthen thine heart wait i say on the lord as you wait the lord will reward your faithfulness in prayer and reading the word in jesus name Every promise you read will be yours and will bring fulfillment to your life in Jesus' name. Number two, penetrating question time without hiding. Penetrating question time without hiding. Uh, let, let's look at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 34. Uh, Acts chapter 8, we're reading from verse 34. And the eunuch and such believe and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? It's a question. He needed the answer to that question for himself. Of whom speaketh the, the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? You are having your quiet time. You are having your 
family devotion and that passage you read there is a promise there that passage you read there is a precept there that passage you read there is a prophecy there that passage you read there is a warning there that passage you read there is a commandment there that passage you read there is um, an example there and so you are asking uh, of that passage of whom speaketh the Lord through this prophet of whom speaketh the prophet this is this for the old covenant people this promise this prophecy this commandment this warning this saying that Jesus said of whom speaketh Jesus this is it only for the false apostles is it only for the people that were with him on earth when he was here or is it for the people of today when he said when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth of whom speaketh Christ this was he speaking of the people in the first generation when Jerusalem will be destroyed in the first century, uh, 70 AD, or was he speaking about the time in which we are living now? Any, any passage you are studying, you ask questions. And then those questions should be penetrating questions that will apply to you. Of whom speaketh the prophet days of himself and full stop, of himself and no further, of the people around him and no further or of some other man this that i'm reading today you'll be asking yourself then when you read that if you discover this is for you this is for believers you're asking another question what shall i do i've read this now i've had a quiet time today i've had the devotion today and i'm asking a question i heard from christ i heard from the word of christ and then i ask another question what shall i do in acts of the apostles chapter 22 we're looking at verse 10 acts chapter 22 we're looking at verse 10 and i said what shall i do lord you read your bible and you've gone through quite a lot now in this particular quiet time and you cannot just close your bible and say whenever we have the devotion all i need to do adoration and praising the lord and then i have confession if there's any pitfall if there's any shortcoming confession and then i have thanksgiving and then i have supplication that's acts a c t s adoration confession thanksgiving and supplication and that is all but you will ask yourself and you will ask the lord lord you spoke to me today in this devotion in this quiet time what shall i do and then you ask the question why this you have read this today you have learned this today and you're asking why why is that there and then sometimes how when you read and there's something you are to do look at what philip did and then you're saying god are you speaking to me what shall i do as a follow-up on what i've read about philip today that he led a samaria and he went to the desert place and he saw one solitary person and he meaning start to him if that is applicable to me you want to ask the question how and then you want to ask the question when you want to know when is this to be done and every time you want to make sure that you trust the lord as you've read the word of god you obey the lord as you trust the word of god and you follow him every day number three now is prayerful qualifying thirst for holy heaven prayerful qualifying thirst for holy heaven everything you're reading everything you're learning everything you have during the quiet time it is so that you have thirst for god thirst for more grace thirst for more godliness and thirst for more righteousness and thirst for more of the goodness of god in your life that thirst must be there Praise God, I'm saved, but I'm not satisfied. 
Praise God, I'm sanctified, but I'm not satisfied. Praise God, I'm spirit filled, but I'm not satisfied. Praise God, I know more scriptures today than I knew 10 years ago, but I'm not satisfied. Praise God, I've won converse to the Lord, but I'm not satisfied. That longing and that passion and that thirst must always be there in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Remember when you read the word of God, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after uh, to the riches of Christ, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after more of God, more of godliness, more of goodness, more of grace, and more of the unsearchable riches of Christ, for they shall be filled. The Lord has spoken to us tonight about quiet time and about devotion, family devotion for a believer, for a minister, for every one of us, for each of us. And I pray everything we have learned today will be reaching upon the tables of our hearts. You will make progress. I said you will make progress and your quiet time and devotion will be better from today more than ever before in Jesus' name. May the Lord daily load you with heavenly blessings in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. That the Lord himself will make our quiet time, our devotion more profitable as we seek the face of the Lord. Please open your mouth and pray to the Lord.